Hello and welcome to Computer Class. My name is Dave and today we're talking about Computer Components Part 2 and starting with the video card or the fifth a part of the computer. So uh, video cards are probably the coolest thing to talk about because they are the part of the card, the part of the computer I should say, that sends the visual information to the screen. And so what is a video card? Here's a simple definition. Video card is an expansion card that allows co the computer to send graphical information to a video display device such as a monitor, TV, or projector. The video card is also known as a graphics card, graphics adapter, or video adapter. And so probably the most important thing to gaming specifically and video editing and lots of other um, formative tasks like 3D rendering and stuff on a computer is done by the graphics card where the CPU is mainly for um, handling the processes of the computer the graphics card is handling the output to the screen of the computer which is why you need two different uh, processing chips you need your CPU to do all the processing and calculations on the computer but you really need your GPU to give you those great beautiful brilliant graphics on screen so they they do different things if that makes sense GPU is the term graphics processing unit that we use to describe the actual uh, chip is named a GPU whereas for on the motherboard we put the processor that's called a CPU that's different I'm trying to make the distinction there. This is the GPU, it's the graphics processing unit. It is on top of the card, um, and the card has all these fans and stuff. This chip is the brains of the graphics card, and is more powerful, uh, and the more powerful the GPU, the better looking the graphics are on screen. And so there are so many tiers of graphics cards, like you could pay um, anywhere from like 30 bucks for a graphics card, 20 bucks for a graphics card, all the way up to thousands of dollars for graphics cards. It's a huge market. That being said, um, this is not so big of a deal anymore, but because it, it's sort of going out, but it used to be, and I'm explaining this because you might see this on a computer, it used to be that you could connect to the graphics cards together to tandemize them and to um, create uh, more power coming out of one card specifically so when you group them together you would get a better output and you've maybe seen this on really high-end gamer machines they have multiple graphics card tandemized together um, as you see in the picture there's an actual uh, SLI link interface or a bridge between the cards that is sort of going out now and they're sorting sort of putting the link into the motherboard itself so the cards are still outpoured, outputting as one graphics processing unit they're kind of linked together but you no longer really have to put the bridge there this is more of an older thing but nonetheless it's still a thing it's just integrated into the actual um, parts of the computer now it's not actually a separate piece that you chunk onto the graphics cards but anyway this is specifically called SLI scalable link interface it's a brand name for multi GPU technology developed by Nvidia and that's the important thing to remember it's um, for Nvidia for linking two or more video cards together to produce a single output. Crossfire is AMD's version of SLI. And so AMD is the other company that makes a lot of graphics cards and their version is called SLI. Uh, I'm sorry, Crossfire. It's called Crossfire. So who coined the term GPU? Well, that's kind of debated, but I would give that to Nvidia. They were the first company to develop um, the GPU really. Um, but NVIDIA has taken things to a whole nother level. Even this year, um, they have come out with a huge evolution in graphics cards. And um, in the future, we are going to have insane graphics on screen because of this company. They continue to raise the bar and step things forward. I traditionally buy NVIDIA graphics cards because I think they're better. Um, and, but AMD cards are nonetheless still a force to be reckoned with, if that makes sense. So this is something to explain too. Graphics card companies, so NVIDIA doesn't actually make really necessarily the graphics card itself. They make the chip and they, I think they do have a series of graphics cards, but they make the chip mainly. There are companies that formulate the cards or put together the cards 
and they um, market them, so to speak. So companies like ATI, EVGA, MSI. So when you buy a graphics card, you you look up like NVIDIA cards, yet you could you see that they're made by a whole bunch of different people like Zotac and Asus and NVIDIA and different things. And you're like, well, why aren't they made specifically just NVIDIA? Why? What's all these other names I'm seeing? Well, the reason you're seeing all these other names is they create the cards. They put it together. They put the heat sinks and the fans on top of them and they, uh, you know, stick the chip, flip chip, flip chip technology and put it onto the, uh, the daughter board of the, of the graphics card that can be plugged into the motherboard it's you know in other words nvidia doesn't fully make the whole process they're they're involved they make the chip um, and they constantly progress that forward and then um i'm sure there's some design that every one of these companies gets from nvidia of course positive in fact on that uh, because you see the designs are seen in the make so anyway the point is that these companies are the ones that market them and so you will see that as you buy different um, different cards. I think NVIDIA also has their, and AMD also has their branded cards, but I, I think that they are mainly farmed out to these companies, if that makes sense. Anyway, uh, the main companies that manufacture graphics cards are AMD, Matrox, and NVIDIA. These companies actually manufacture the processors called the Graphics Processing Unit. Uh, that operate the video card. Many other companies utilize these processors in their particular brands of video card that exists. And like I was just explaining on the last slide. So if you wanted to know the main companies to take, I think Matrox actually does, like if you've ever seen a, um, a huge paneling of screens put together, a card with multiple outputs, like more than four would be like maybe like 10 outputs to 10 different screens would be something like a matrox. They would make something for that. So they're not really well known, but they do do a lot of that type of stuff. AMD and Nvidia are sort of the companies you will see battling it out in the uh, personal computing world. So how many graphics, how are graphics cards named? Well, um, Traditionally, they, they have like different numbers associated with them. Um, NVIDIA tends to be like GeForce or RTX series, they will say, uh, GTX, RTX, they'll come out with these different names. And then they count up the number depending on the year. Um, so I think we're on the uh, 3,800 series uh, for high-end graphics cards for NVIDIA. Um, Matrox has its G series, C series, and they count up in series. Is. AMD has RX series, and and they count up from there. They're developing higher numbers. So that's kind of how they're named. These are a little bit older cards mentioned on the board here. You'd have to look up the most recent ones, um, but they give names that are pretty long uh, associated with them. And uh, GeForce tends to be Nvidia's mantra. Um, AMD tends to use Radeon as a word in front of theirs if you want to get specific. Um, and then, of course, you have Matrox just has literally a letter, like Go Matrox. Okay. That being said, how do graphics cards render 3D gaming images? Well, basically, how I understand it, and there's a whole lot more that could go into this, I'm positive, but it's... To simplify it down, basically they use polygons and rasterization. So a polygon is a plane figure with at least three straight sides or angles, and typically could be five or more. And basically what you do is you sort of overlay these polygons onto the landscape or figurine that you want and create the game that you want or graphical image that you see. This is why games are skin deep. Like if you accidentally fall through the map, if you've ever done that, the reason for that is there's literally just a layer of polygons. So sometimes when you're actually like you stick your arm as a character into the side of the game or something like that, you can actually stick your arm through the polygons or somehow you're standing, you know, one on top of another as a guy, you know, like two guys are standing on top of each other, uh, like, or, or two characters are standing inside of each other is what I should say. You can see like, that the polygons are like shifting, so to speak, or, or if you like 
poke or slam into the side of a building sometimes you can see actually see how you can break through a little bit but you're not really it's just because the the map is actually skin deep and that being said it's because of rasterization taking the image described in a wire frame and converting it to a raster image or a dotted structure that represents a rectangular grid of pixels that can be seen on your monitor so they take these polygons and they rasterize them <coughs> so that they are um, basically pixel based and this is more you're basically seeing a massive um, image so to speak that's overlaid in a polygonal texture on top of a grid so to speak it's the only way i know how to describe it um, and then there's different maps associated with it uh, whether it be uh, bump or or lighting or shadow maps which are, are definitely in the game so to speak that are overlaid on top of that okay so that being said once you understand kind of um, how graphics cards render 3d images they're rendering to the screen and you can put as many screens as you want. Most graphics cards usually have four outputs. If they're a nice card, um, they could have two if they're a low-end card or three, um, but they could have more than that. So the key is to, to remember with graphic cards, if your graphics card has the right, uh, if your graphics card has the right um, output of HDMI, DVI, or DisplayPort, you can link more than one screen. And so usually uh, people don't understand this, but HDMI high definition multimedia interface, that is a specific uh, port on the back of the graphics card, DVI, digital video interface, or display port, they're all different. Um, and they all do about the same things. Uh, usually display port tends to be the up and coming technology. So that would be the absolute best in my opinion. Um, but HDMI is is not bad either. DVI is more of a legacy um, type of connection, but nonetheless gives you a decent connector. Okay, but you can hook up to you know sometimes six cards with certain uh, graphics card interfaces. Okay, and basically what you would do is you would go into your computer and you would change the settings of the display monitor to incorporate multiple monitors. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this lesson, but uh, you can look it up online how to actually make your one display go into three and kind of pieces of the uh, display will be shown on all three screens so that you could have and create sort of the atmosphere that you have here. The other option is to just get a widescreen monitor, which could work as well, which there exists today. All right, so here's an example, another example of a wide, uh, someone using six screens, which is pretty cool. Um, and then moving past that, another example of a graphical output from a graphics card could be something VR, like VR or AR. So what does VR mean? Well, uh, VR is virtual reality gaming. And basically it is where a person can experience being in a three-dimensional environment and interact with the environment during the game. So basically you have some sort of apparatus, maybe it's a wand or maybe it's a gun or something, and you have this headset over your face and it's virtual reality. It's replacing your reality with the new reality. And then you're playing the game as you see the people on screen here, basically they change the characters and you play the game as that character, but you like physically move around, which could be, honestly make it so that you break something in the house that you're standing in physically uh, but anyway uh, VR is really cool they're usually super expensive setups they're coming down in price but they tend to be pricey um, but they're super cool if you can get your hands on one the immersion experience is unreal here is a video talking about virtuality what is it I'll link that down in the description and here is another video talking about different types of virtuality headsets, which I'm going to talk about now, but check this out. I'll link that down in the description. And then, that being said, what is augmented reality? And then I'll talk about the different types of headsets that exist. Augmented reality is a technology that superimposes the computer's generated image on the user's view of the real world and thus providing a composite view. And so uh, Google was kind of the one who spearheaded this in the beginning. They were like, hey, we have Google Glass. And they had these um, like augmented reality 
uh, type glasses, which some people bought them. They were pricey. Uh, they kind of were only on one eye, so to speak, but it projected to both. It was a little interesting. It was more in the corner. They didn't. They weren't the greatest thing in the world, but however, Microsoft's version of this is so much better in my opinion, and I will talk about that in a second. Um, before I do that, here is a video on Microsoft's HoloLens. Pretty cool. Take a, a second and watch that. I'll link it down in the description. And then we're talking about the best headsets for VR and HR, uh, VR and AR, sorry. All right, Oculus Rift, owned by Facebook. That's the key to remember. The Oculus Rift is a virtual reality headset developed by and manufactured by Oculus VR, released on March 28th, 2016. In my lifetime, this was developing technology, probably in your lifetime too. Um, and so pretty neat to see history kind of writing itself. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like. It's got the two uh, weird type wands. And also you would need these uh, pillars that you set up in the room. They're kind of small. They're like on a little pedestal and they would kind of perceive the reality of the room. I think that's also an addition. And there's usually a plug that comes out the back of the VR headset that plugs in the computer, if I'm not mistaken. Second is the HTC Vive owned by Steam and is a virtual reality headset developed by HTC and the Valve Corporation, which by the way is what Steam is, uh, released on April 5th, 2016. So again, the same year as this one. So it was a lot developing that year. And then Project Morpheus, made by Sony, is a virtual reality gaming head-mounted display developed by Sony Interactive Ent Entertainment, released, get this, in October 13th, 2016. So all three of these in the same year came out. And then Samsung Gear VR, there's portable ones, uh, is a mobile virtual reality headset developed by Samsung Electronics, collaboration with Oculus, so you can stick your phone in there, kind of view things, as well as um, Google Cardboard was another one that people made, but that's kind of a cheap little dealio. Google Glass, developed by Google X. This is a AR, or augmented reality headset, as I talked about earlier. An optical head mount display designed in the shape of a pair of eyeglasses, released in 2012. So again, way ahead of the 2016 date. It was Google who was kind of looking into this type of technology, and it really wasn't great. It was still in its developmental stage. As you can see here, this one isn't the coolest looking one. And then Microsoft HoloLens in 2016 was like, hey, we could bring this a whole step forward. And now they have Microsoft HoloLens too, I think. But uh, Microsoft HoloLens is a first self-contained holographic computer enabling you to engage with your digital content, interact with holograms in the real world around you. Isn't that cool? And here we thought holograms were only for the movies. They exist. Proof right there. Uh, we just have to develop all the software associated with it and make it way cooler, but it's in the development right now. And that's the important part. This is a video about virtual reality and how real is it? It's a real driver driving in the real world with the virtual reality headset on, so completely blind. Pretty cool, check out that video in the description. And that is it. That's all I have to talk about when it comes to um, gaming and specifically the graphics card. This is everything associated with the graphics card and heads up displays and graphics that I can think of around you. It's pretty important to know this stuff and to be able to interact with it and to maybe one day utilize this specific piece of the computer to create some really cool things. Anyway, hopefully you learned something and I will see you in the next video.